Hi, my name is Raymond Camden and today I'm going to walk you through a video where I show creating a simple application with Ionic Creator, something that is static and you know kind of hard coded and taking that and actually making it a real application that uses dynamic data. Now for this application we are going to build a simple master detail type interface. So the initial screen will be a list of data. You'll click on a particular item and then you will see a detail view of the thing that you clicked on. Now in order to give us some fun data we're going to use the Star Wars API and I'll show you that real quick. That's located at swapi.co. This is a free API that has all kind of cool Star Wars data. Um, and it's uh, easy to use and free. So with that out of the way, let's actually start by building the project within Ionic Creator. So I'm going to come in here and do a new project. And you can see I already have a Star Wars app there. So we'll call this Star Wars. API demo. The name does not matter at all and we'll stay with the blank template. Alright, so because my first page is going to be a list of data, we're going to add a list onto this particular page. So I'm going to scroll down and look for my list control and I probably went right by, there we go, list. Just drag it on there. Now you get three list items automatically and you can add some more and take some off but we're just you know building a prototype so it's really not that important but I do want this to you know kind of look a bit realistic so I'm gonna go into each list item and I'm gonna go ahead and change the text to be the name of a Star Wars film so we'll actually do a new hope and the Empire Strikes Back and the last one will be Return of the Jedi. Now note that there's links that we could use but we don't have any pages so we don't really have anything to link to. We'll come back to this later. Last thing I'll do is go ahead and give this a real title. So we'll call it Star Wars App like so. All right, so now that we have the home page done, well, let's go ahead and create a new page. And this will be the detail page that you'll end up on when you click something in the list. So make a new page, we'll keep it blank as well. And let's call this one, we'll say film title. And this will actually be the film title later on when it's actually dynamic and let's go ahead and drop a simple paragraph of text on here. Now we could put anything we want to in this place. Um, the API returns like when the movie was made, uh, when it was made and stuff like that. But to keep it simple uh, we will do the crawl and the crawl is that yellow text that goes up at the beginning of every Star Wars film. So for right now though we'll say the crawl would go here. As simple as that. Alright, so now that we have a page, we can go back to the first one, go back to our list item, and then begin linking it to the new page. In this case, see it's film title page two. So I'm just gonna link them all and boom. Alright, so let's actually see if this works. And it does. Now, if I wanted to make a really powerful prototype, I could actually build three different pages uh, that represented the detail for each of these. And when you would click, it would say a different thing and all that. But I think uh, for right now, you get the basic idea and you get the functionality. And I think a typical non-technical client would probably be able to handle that just fine. All right, so we're actually done. So that's part one. Part two now is actually taking this and making it dynamic. Now, when you work with Ionic Creator, you can actually get a special code that you, that you can use at the command line to create a new project with what you built here. 
Now I want to say something. For a drag and drop tool, Ionic Creator outputs some great code. It wasn't always that way, uh, but the code that it creates now is really well written. I'm definitely not an Angular expert per se, but to me, uh, the code is very familiar with what I kind of think of as the best way to build a Angular slash Ionic application. Uh, so, so that's an option. However, I don't like using this in, in, in this particular case because what I want to do instead is grab the zip file. And what I'll do is I'll create a whole new, uh, brand new Ionic application and I'll use the zip file to kind of be like the original source static version that I can uh, compare against and kind of build up as I add real functionality. Obviously, you know, use what makes sense for you. But I would download this and again, I would extract this into wherever I'm going to be doing my code. Now I've already done all the code and you don't want to see me type and all that. So instead, what we're going to do is kind of focus on, uh, uh, you know, uh, what the finished code looks like and how we can test it to make sure it's running. So I've downloaded this and I've extracted it. And again, you know, I've already done, done this before, but uh, let's look at uh, this project running from the command line. All right, so I am in the folder that I created uh, that is storing what I downloaded. And you could see a directory called creator version. That's actually what I just built in Ionic Creator. So if I were to go in there and just take a look at it, you could see it has my HTML and JavaScript and all that. And I could run that if I wanted to just to confirm that it actually worked. I'm not going to do that though. Instead though, what I did is I went and I created a new version called V1. And the reason why it's V1 is because we're gonna have a second version as well. And the way that I created V1 was by doing Ionic start V1, that's the folder name. And I told it to use the code in the creator version uh, folder as its source. So what this does is it gives me the V1 folder, which is a proper Ionic project, uh, but it still allows me to kind of have an original local copy uh, that I can use for comparison's sake as well. So what we're going to do with this version is make it dynamic, but keep it using static text. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is that if we look at this text here, this is the list. You could see it's all hard coded and the film title is all static as well. What we want to do is convert this to actually get a list of films from a service, a service that we're going to build that will eventually talk to the Star Wars API. But what's nice is that we can set up this application to be dynamic and talk to a service and still use fake data there. So I can update my template. I can make this use, you know, a dynamic list of films and all that while still working with fake data. So let's walk through this and hopefully it'll make a bit more sense once you see it uh, working with the static data. So this is my V1 and what we're going to do is look at a couple of changes that I've made. So I'm going to open up my templates and first off, here is that list of films that again initially was a hard-coded list of three films. Notice now I'm doing a simple repeat of film and films. Yeah, you have no idea where films is coming from, but eventually we're going to set it up and we're linking to uh, a function called film title and we're passing in the ID of the film. This is how we're going to essentially change states to link to the detail. Over on the detail page, we've made the title dynamic and we've made the crawl dynamic as well. On the JavaScript side, we now have in our controller a call to a new file that, again, we haven't written. You're going to see it in a few seconds called film service. We're going to call film service dot get films. And when it's done, we're simply going to update uh, our local scope variable films to have the result of that service. 
So again, uh, this service is actually going to return fake data. But what's nice is that when we're done with this conversion, all we'll have to do is update the service. So I also made a slight change to the routes uh, to support passing in the ID. You could see that token right there that will allow me to have uh, every film link to the page and pass in the ID. And in my controller, you could see where I use state params to pick that up. So the last thing we need is the film service. And here it is. Here's the get films call. And all it's doing is using a fake set of data. And just so happens it matches uh, the uh, uh, initial fake data we had. Uh, but what's nice is that this is acting as if it's really calling some remote service. And here is the get film method. And literally, if you ask for film one, it's going to return film one and crawl for one. All right, so let's run this in the browser and see if it works. So we'll go into V1 and Ionic Serve. And there we go. And you could see our three films. If I click, it loads. And again, it's not very creative, but you could see it is there. And literally, if we come in here and say, let's add a new one. Let's see ID4 title. Uh, Smurf Foo. I'm just making stuff up and crawl. This is not real. And save it. If we go back, you can see it showed up automatically. So this kind of proves that once we actually end up uh, making the service real, you know, it's just going to kind of magically work. So let's talk about how we can convert that service to be a real service. I have a second project called V2, which is the second version, and the only real change is in the services. <coughs> the first thing we do is in Git Films, we're actually calling the API. Now, uh, the API has its own documentation, but you can you know, probably guess what this is doing here. It's asking for all the films. Now, I ran into an interesting issue. Uh, the API doesn't actually return an ID value for films. I, kind of surprised me. I, that's kind of normal for anything that returns list uh, to have an ID value, you know, a primary key of some sort. It did, however, return a URL value that represented the URL that you can call to get the data for that particular film. So I kind of cheated. I took their data and I mapped it so that the URL value was the ID value. So that allowed me uh, for, you know, when I do my linking, uh, when I say, you know, load this ID one, now it's actually saying load uh, the URL value. My Git film service will simply take that URL and just plain call it. And literally that's the only changes that we had to make. So let's test this one as well. All right, and there we go. And you could see the real list of data here. And uh, I won't click on the Force Awakens because maybe you haven't seen it yet, but we'll do Empire Strikes Back. And that is the crawl for Empire Strikes Back. So just gonna recap, uh, we went from a fake application designed in Ionic Creator and I could have modified how it looked, added more buttons, et cetera, et cetera. And I put some hard-coded data in there. I then used that to create a new project and I made it dynamic but still using a fake set of data. But every other aspect of the application, all the templates and stuff, they were ready for real data. And then all I had to do was learn how to use the Star Wars API, you know, to learn what methods to call and then simply update my service to call those. So everything I've talked about is also written up in a blog post and all the code is available on GitHub and the link is on the blog, ho uh, blog post. Hopefully you found this helpful and if you have any questions, just ask me.